Can we have just one more second? The hearing will now come to order. Uh, good morning. Welcome to today's hearing, uh, providing aviation weather services to the Federal Aviation uh, Administration. Uh, this subcommittee has frequently struggled with the peculiar nonchalance of some government agencies in the face of the obvious dysfunction of critical programs. Uh, today we struggle with the equally peculiar determination by the FAA to solve a problem that appears not to exist. Uh, to fix what ain't broke or appears not to be broke. Uh, the current system of delivering aviation weather products uh, for air traffic controllers appears to work pretty well. Uh, for 30 years, the National Weather, uh, weather Service, the AWS, has provided support to the uh, Federal Aviation Administration through aviation weather forecast units that are located at each of the 21 regional air centers. There are 84 weather forecasters uh, spread among those 21 centers, offering 16 hours of service each day at an annual cost of 12 million. Uh, the system appears to be lean and well suited to air traffic, air traffic controllers' needs. In 2006, Booz Allen Hamilton conducted a survey of air traffic controllers at seven of the regional air traffic centers under a contract with the FAA. Uh, their conclusion was apparently not what FAA wanted to hear. Uh, Booz Allen found that air traffic controllers have a strong desire uh, to have on-site weather forecasters and considered the services of the meteorologists highly valuable uh, and the air traffic controllers expressed sensitivity, that's the phrase of Booz Allen, uh, to any actions that might terminate or severely alter the delivery method of those services. Um, this weather forecasting supports by the FAA's own calculations a $1 trillion aviation industry. Uh, currently, the FAA is spending approximately $1 billion a year on next-gen development, so the $12 million for aviation weather forecasting that FAA pays the uh, NWS for um, seems uh, like a bargain. Uh, still, FAA has pushed the National Weather Service to consolidate uh, their aviation weather service to a single center since 2005. Uh, the FAA's determination to force the NWS to reorganize does not appear supported by any particular evidence of a significant problem with the current system that cannot be addressed within the system uh, or any evidence that there is, a, is substantial waste in the current system. Uh, FAA's determination appears not supported by any evidence that a consolidated system would provide better service or, or even service as good as what the NWS now provides. Uh, again, air traffic controllers like the NWS system just fine and don't want to change it. Uh, GAO concludes that the FAA settled for a solution 
uh, for reorganizing aviation weather services before they could they could clearly articulate their own requirements for those services uh, and before they had given any thought to how to measure existing performance. Uh, in other words, FAA decided on a solution before they figured out if they had a problem. Uh, only since the last GAA report of 2008 has the FAA and the National Weather Service begun to develop performance metrics uh, for the aviation weather units. Now for the first time, an exercise is underway by FAA and NWS uh, to baseline the performance of the existing units through these baselines, or though, those, though these baselines are built on impressionistic interviews rather than a steady aggregation of hard performance numbers. Uh, we all support performance-based decisions um, and a commitment to continuing improvement, two slogans the FAA and, and other government agencies uh, frequently use. Um, but the reality is that performance-based decisions making uh, uh, performance-based decision making requires uh, meaningful rigorous performance metrics. The FAA does not have those uh, but has determined that a new organization uh, organizational structure is needed. Uh, the FAA says that this consolidation will provide a solid platform to transition to the next gen air management system. Uh, but we have but they have not included NextGen's weather planning uh, office in the discussion about the requirements for the NWS or in their evaluation of, in, of any of the proposed reorganizations. Uh, the Federal Aviation Administration has uh, claims that the consolidation will save at least $2 million, uh, but those savings can only come through reducing the number of weather forecasters who are dedicated to supporting the needs of aviation. Ultimately, the FAA has pushed for a plan to consolidate aviation uh, weather services uh, that does not respond to a clearly articulated need or problem and would change a system that has air traffic controllers full support. Uh, a shift in how services are delivered will cost money to test and if adopted will create new risks that don't exist in the current system. Perhaps that will result in a greater uh, mass, critical mass of expertise in one place, uh, but the downsizing of the staff will leave each uh, forecast responsible for more air, air space um, and deprive air traffic controllers of a forecaster to stand over their shoulder in a weather uh, crisis, a critical mass of expertise that air traffic controllers care about a lot. Uh, in preparing for this hearing, the subcommittee gathered information from the FAA, the NWS, the National Transportation Safety Board, the Air Traffic Controllers Union, the Weather Service Employees Union, and the Government Accountability Office. Um, we also received the witnesses' testimony in recent days. Uh, the point of the exercise of, of this new structure is still hard to understand. Uh, and with that, I now recognize the ranking member, uh, Dr. Brown from Georgia, for his opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to welcome the witnesses here today and thank them for participating in this important hearing on the National Weather Service's Aviation Weather Forecasting Proposal to the FAA. As an instrument rated pilot myself, I understand that aviation weather forecasting is critically important. Aside from the obvious and primary concern of safety, the FAA estimates the weather-related delays have cost $41 billion in the socioeconomic impact on the U.S. economy. In order to ensure safety and mitigate these impacts, the Weather Service provides aviation weather information on a reimbursable basis to the FAA. Since these organizations are tasked with providing aviation weather information and ensuring air traffic safety, coordination is imperative. Unfortunately, several reviews in recent years have found opportunities where coordination could be strengthened and services improved. In an attempt to address these issues and decrease operating costs, the FAA requested the Weather Service to restructure its center weather service units by consolidating offices, provide remote services, reduce personnel costs, and provide services 24 hours a day, seven days a week. On June 3rd, the Weather Service issued its current plan after having two previous proposals rejected by the FAA. The proposal put forward in June by the Weather Service is far from perfect. I think they will even admit this. They clearly have to work, have work to do to establish performance baselines to ensure that service will not be degraded. They have challenges relating to infrastructure and technology. 
Questions remain about how this will fit within the FAA's next-gen initiative, if at all, and interagency collaboration remains a concern. While it may seem that recent GAO reviews are critical of the Weather Service's proposals, one has to realize that the Weather Service is simply responding to the FAA's direction. This coordination process between the two entities is unique and perplexing. The FAA is acting as a customer for Weather Service products and has provided the Weather Service with its requirements. Because the FAA no longer considers private vendors an option for fulfilling these requirements, the Weather Service is in essence a sole source contractor for FAA, a situation <laughs> vendors usually relish as it puts them in an advantageous negotiating position. Instead, the Weather Service has put forth several proposals only to have them rejected, most recently because of cost. I hope the FAA realizes that new requirements are usually accompanied by new cost. Sure, technological advancements and improved processes can achieve cost savings, but when a customer demands more from its vendor, it should be willing to pay for it. Similarly, if a customer wants to pay less for a product, they shouldn't be surprised when they get less in return. This may seem like trivial bureaucratic bickering, but it has real-world implications to both commerce and airline passenger safety. I'm happy to hear that coordination between the two ent entities is strengthening and hope that the partnership can find a solution that's amenable to both parties because ultimately the customers are our constituents and the vendor is the government. As a pilot myself, I'll do everything I can to make sure this transaction goes smoothly and that the pilots and passengers in the air have the information that they desperately need to perform safe operations in their aviation endeavors. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown. I'm not a pilot, but I am a frequent passenger, as are all members of Congress. Uh, I ask unanimous consent that all additional opening statements submitted by members be included in the record, and without objection, is so ordered. Uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce our first panel of witnesses. Uh, first is Dr. David Pounder, a fairly frequent witness here for the subcommittee. Uh, he is the Director of Information Technology Management Issues at the Government Accountability Office, the GAO. Uh, Dr. Jack Hayes is the Assistant Administrator for National Weather Service uh, at the National Ocean Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. Uh, and Mr. Richard Day is the Senior Vice President for Operations of uh, Air Traffic Organizations uh, at, the, at the U.S. Uh, Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA. Uh, each of our witnesses should know you will have uh, five minutes for your spoken testimony. Uh, your written testimony will be included in the record for the hearing. Uh, when you have completed your spoken testimony, uh, you will be given, uh, you will begin, we will begin with questions and each member will have five minutes to question the panel. It's the practice of the subcommittee to receive testimony under oath. Do any of you have any objection to uh, taking an oath? Uh, the record will reflect that uh, none of the witnesses expressed an objection. Uh, you also have the right to be represented by counsel. Do any of you have counsel here? The record will reflect that all the witnesses uh, indicated that they did not have counsel. Uh, and will you now please stand and raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Okay. Uh, the record will reflect that all or the witnesses uh, took the oath. Uh, we will now begin with Mr. Pounder of GAO. Mr. Pounder, please begin. Chairman Miller, Ranking Member Brown, we appreciate the opportunity to testify on, on our aviation weather work. The National Weather Service supports the Federal Aviation Administration by providing aviation-related forecasts and warnings at air traffic control and route centers across the country. These forecasts and warnings include information on thunderstorms, air turbulence, and icing. These services are provided through an interagency agreement, and FAA reimburses NWS approximately $12 million annually for them. Last year, I testified on the many issues with this arrangement, which included NWS providing inconsistent weather products across the 21 en route centers, FAA's inability to clearly define requirements or what it needs, 
Both agencies' lack of performance measures to ensure quality of weather observations and multiple proposals to restructure that were each rejected. A brief history of these proposals is worth revisiting. In 2005, FAA requested that NWS restructure to a smaller number of sites to reduce costs. In 2006, a proposal was submitted which FAA rejected in 2007 because it did not reduce the number of sites or costs. In December 2007, FAA provided NWS with a new set of requirements and requested a proposal for three operational concepts. NWS provided this proposal in May 2008, but FAA rejected it because the costs were too high. In September 2008, NWS requ FAA requested that NWS provide another restructuring proposal by December 2008 to go to two sites. NWS submitted this proposal last month, six months later than when it was due. The proposal reduces the weather units from 20 to two locations, reduces NWS staff from 84 to 50, is planned to take three years, will cost almost $13 million, and is expected to reduce the annual cost by roughly $2 million per year. FAA plans to respond to this proposal by August 3rd. So four years into this, we're now on our third major restructuring proposal with no clear business case driving the potential change. In addition, there are many challenges FAA and NWS must address if they decide to move forward with the latest proposal. Before getting into these challenges, I would like to acknowledge that there has been some progress by NWS in improving the consistency of their weather products and defining and baselining certain performance measures. But much work still remains here on both fronts. Turning to the challenges, my written testimony lays out several major challenges if the current weather aviation structure is modified. I'd like to highlight five of these. First, interagency collaboration. These agencies have not worked well together to resolve issues and to accomplish meaningful change. Since 2005, FAA has rejected all proposals, and we have had four years of very little action. Second, solidifying requirements. FAA provided a comprehensive set of requirements in January 2008, and these have not been updated despite the fact that modifications have been discussed by the two agencies. It is extremely important to formally update requirements given the historical working relationship. Third, aligning restructuring with the next generation air transportation system. Neither agency has ensured that the restructuring aligns with the next-gen national vision for restructuring air traffic facilities. Fourth, ensuring no degradation of service. In its proposal, NWS plans to demonstrate the new two-site operational concept in a nine-month demonstration project. In addition, NWS has proposed that an independent evaluation team of both government and industry officials review this demonstration. While these are logical steps, the performance measures to demonstrate no degradation of service have not been defined, and as we have stated prior, baseline metrics are limited. Ensuring no degradation of service will be extremely difficult, if not impossible, without having a clear set of performance metrics. Fifth, technology transition. To restructure aviation weather services, both agencies need to modify weather systems. Moving forward, NWS and FAA need to approve performance measures and continue to baseline performance, improve interagency collaboration by agreeing to a future concept of operations, finalize and clearly document requirements for aviation weather services, ensure that any restructuring is aligned with the next-gen initiative, undertake a comprehensive demonstration that measures success against baseline performance measures to ensure that any restructuring does not result in degraded service and does not jeopardize safety. And finally, NWS and FAA need to effectively transition the technologies to a new operational concept if, in fact, this is pursued. Mr. Chairman, this concludes my statement. I would be pleased to respond to questions. Thank you, Mr. Pounder. Dr. Hayes for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Brown and other members of the uh, committee. Um, for the opportunity to testify on the National Weather Service provision of aviation weather, for, uh, weather information to the FAA. I'm Jack Hayes, the Assistant Administrator for Weather Services and the Director of the National Weather Service. The National Weather Service is a line office within the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. 
The Weather Service plays a critical role in providing weather information to the FAA in support of their mission for safe and efficient operation of the national airspace system. We provide warnings, forecasts, meteorological advice, and con consultation throughout all phases of flight, including pre-flight, planning, and operations. These services come from many National Weather Service offices, including our Weather Forecast Offices, the Alaskan Aviation Weather Unit, the Volcanic Ash Advisory Centers, the Aviation Weather Center, and Center Weather Service Units, CWSUs for short. We're committed to providing quality aviation weather services. Let me focus on CWSUs. Meteorologists at our CWSUs provide weather advisories, forecasts, and advice to air traffic management. The CWSUs are located at each of the 21 FAA air route traffic control centers. CWSUs operate 16 hours per day, typically between 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. local time, seven days a week when air traffic is at its peak. Since the last hearing in 2008, FAA and the National Weather Service have worked to refine service requirements. The Weather Service delivered a, res a revised response uh, to FAA in June of this year. Our response provides uh, proposes rather to provide CWC support from two centers in the lower 48 states. As part of our approach, we plan to conduct a demonstration validation or DEMVAL to objectively test and validate the viability of this solution. A critical component of our response and a prerequisite before any decision is made to change the operational structure of CWC support is to demonstrate the capability of meeting FAA requirements from two centers with no degradation of uh, aviation weather services and no impact to safety. If the demonstration is successful, consolidation of 20 CWSUs in the lower 48 states into two centers is proposed. Each center would serve as an operational backup for the other. New weather products and services, including the provision of 24 by 7 or 24 hours a day, seven days a week weather support services will be introduced to meet FAA requirements in support of the national airspace system. We will work collaboratively with the FAA to plan, conduct, and evaluate the DEMVAL to ensure that the proposed structure does not degrade aviation weather services. The National Academy of Sciences has agreed to provide unbiased expertise to oversee and evaluate the results of the DEMVAL. The FAA has stated that face-to-face -face services and briefings are no longer required. We believe new technology can be leveraged to allow remote service and improve consistency. Our response provides for remote briefing services to FAA terminal radar approach control and control tower personnel, which are currently not co-located with our CWSUs, but have routine interactions with our forecasters. The consolidated CWSU structure would reduce the staff from 84 to 50. I'm committed to ensuring that any affected CWSU employee who wants a job with the National Weather Service will have one. We've reviewed our staffing model and are confident we can absorb the 34 positions through normal attrition. Our 42-month schedule for transition to a consolidated CWSU structure, including a planning phase, a nine-month period for DEMFAL, followed by transition to the new structure. We've been working with the FAA to define future CWSU services. In addition, over the past 18 months, we've been working to improve the consistency and quality of existing CWSU aviation weather services. Our joint CWSU site evaluations and ongoing discussion with the FAA are helping us to establish and refine baseline performance measures by this fall. These measures will provide the basis for evaluating and continuing to improve our services. NOAA recognizes the Next Generation Air Transportation System, or NextGen, will result in a system-wide air traffic management transformation. This, this transformation will affect how we collect, manage, and disseminate weather-related information and how the FAA makes weather-related decisions. We also recognize the need for close coordination with the federal weather community to meet NextGen weather support needs. NOAA is working with the Joint Planning and Development Office uh, to fully integrate NOAA's weather information and services improvements into the next-gen development. This will enable us to meet requirements for the transformation and ensure NOAA's contributions are compatible with next-gen decision support, dissemination, display systems, including interoperability of any revised C CWSU support structure. Last week, we received the GAO's draft report, review of we aviation weather restructuring. We're reviewing the draft report and developing our action plan. Moreover, we believe our June 2009 response to the FAA for CWSU services addresses some of the key recommendations in the draft report, including DEMVAL overseen by the National Academy of Sciences to ensure involvement of stakeholders in an unbiased evaluation. 
Also highlighted in our response to the FAA is the importance of aligning organizational changes with next-gen initiatives. We agree with the need to establish baseline performance measures as stated by the GAO and we are working to co now collecting data on four of the five standards originally developed by the FAA and the National Weather Service to establish that baseline. We will continue to work together to review assessment and measure me methods for the fifth proposed uh, standard uh, forecast accuracy. These performance metrics are critical data points to evaluate the DEMVAL. The National Weather Service reaffirms its commitment to providing critical weather support that assists the FAA in managing the national airspace system. The national airspace system must remain safe, efficient, and cost-effective for the people of this country. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Dr. Hayes. Mr. Day for five minutes. Chairman Miller, Ranking uh, Member Brown, members of the subcommittee, thank you for inviting me here to testify about the future of Center Weather Service units. Our job at the FAA is to oversee a safe and efficient national airspace system. Reliable aviation weather forecasting is an integral part of that, and the National Weather Service's support has been a key component of that as well. Our operations data tells us that 70 percent of air traffic delays are caused by weather. To address this problem, we are collaborating with the National Weather Service on aviation weather forecasting and how to improve that forecasting to promote safety and reduce weather delays. In our constant quest to improve aviation safety and efficiency, we are looking to capitalize on technological improvements that have merged over the last 30 years since CWSU operations began. Technological improvements have changed the way in which weather information is generated, disseminated, and used. In addition, we have also asked the National Weather Service to examine three different service methods. First, using the existing CWSU configuration. Second, using a reduced number of CWSUs. And third, using one centralized facility to provide improved, consistent, and continuous weather service to centers 24 hours per day, seven days per week, versus the current 16 hours per day, seven, hours, seven days per week service presently provided. Since the committee's last hearing on CWSUs, National Weather Service responded to our request with three alternatives. Each of these had some innovative ways to meet our requirements. However, none were accepted because the costs were too high for each alternative compared to the cost of the program. Last year, the FAA advised the National Weather Service that we preferred the single weather center solution but recognized the need for backup and requested the National Weather Service refine its proposal. We, reserved, we received the National Weather Service revised proposal last month and expect to complete our assessment of the proposal in early August. Although our assessment of the National Weather Service proposal is not complete with a two weather center approach, we see an opportunity to improve aviation weather forecasting services in the near term. We expect this approach to provide finer resolution and more consistent and accurate forecasts that will improve the safety and efficiency of traffic flows through the national airspace system. This consolidation or excuse me, this consolidated CWSU model would allow meteorologists to dynamically allocate resources to areas with active weather conditions having the most impact on aviation operations. We understand that there may be some concern about providing weather services remotely. I want to assure you that we have considerable experience with remote weather briefings. Today, CWSUs provide remote support to terminal radar approach controls and select towers just as flight service stations provide remote weather briefings to pilots. In addition, providing weather services using this model is consistent with centralized weather operations used internationally by the Department of Defense and by airlines. And CWSUs will not be the only source of aviation weather information for FAA's air traffic operations. National Weather Service would continue to have approximately 130 meteorologists providing meteorological watch and issuing forecasts for parts of the National Airspace System from its weather forecast office, offices and the Aviation Weather Center providing both terminal and en route forecasts. In addition to the benefits we expect to see in the near term, a two weather center approach will also help aviation weather services towards the FAA's future needs and vision in the next generation air transportation system or next gen. One key concept of next gen is a common operational picture of weather information for all air traffic management decisions. 
This concept is already being put into practice through the collect Collaborative Collective Forecast Product, or CCFP. The CCFP provides a common operational picture of convective weather on which to build the air traffic management plan. FAA and National Aerospace System stakeholders now rely on the CCFP as the primary forecast product for NASWIDE operations planning during the convective season. Consistent with NextGen, we need a common operational picture of all weather elements that impact air traffic. In conclusion, we are very hopeful about the benefits of the National Weather Service proposal. However, I want to assure the committee that our assessment of the National Weather Service proposal is not the final consideration prior to implementation. Let me be clear, we will not change the current configuration until a demonstration and validation show that we are able to effectively disseminate the most timely and accurate weather forecasting for the safe operation of flights in our system. This concludes my remarks, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, um, Mr. Day. We will now begin our first round of questions. I now recognize myself for um, five minutes. Uh, again, uh, I understand, uh, based upon our staff interviews and other information, that the air traffic controllers strongly support keeping meteorologists uh, where they are in the regional air traffic control centers where they can stand over their shoulder uh, in times of weather crisis. Um, Mr. Day, since the air traffic controllers are the, the consumers, the customers uh, for the weather services, uh, what role have they played in developing this proposal for the consolidation of services? So the air traffic controllers have not uh, had a central role on developing the requirements for these services. Uh, however, there has been assessments uh, ongoing between the FAA and the National Weather Services going out and reviewing the services currently uh, provided in the central center weather service units. And as I understand, they have gotten, gotten feedback from uh, the uh, so the center where there's service employees as well as the uh, controllers on those uh, assessments. Would those be the uh, CWSU site reviews? I yep. think we've now gotten a copy of. Yes, sir. And, and there's been 13 completed out of the 21 sites. My understanding is that in every case, the view of the air traffic controllers is they like things the way they were a whole lot better than the proposed change. Is that correct? Uh, <laughs> This is change, and having been a controller um, many years ago, uh, I've gone through a number of technological and changes, and, and uh, oftentimes I would resist those changes because I felt comfortable with the tools and the assets and the, the advice around me. And our controllers are the same way. And we've done a number of technological changes, and what we often find is after we introduce the change safely and uh, we work to resolve concerns, we oftentimes find that, uh, in most cases, we find that they, it's hard to pry the new technology from their hands. Uh, we also find that uh, our new controllers, uh, the next geners and Gen Xers, really do embrace technology, and uh, they are actually pushing us to continue to look for new technologies and new ways to do business. Uh, so uh, we do find that, well, uh, and we do understand um, resistance to the change. We do want to address their concerns and feel that as we work through a successful demonstration and validation uh, process, which would include their involvement and feedback, uh, we will re will resolve those concerns and uh, come up with a much superior service than we have today. I understand the consolidation proposal would require at least a 60 percent reduction in the staffing of meteorologists uh, during the heaviest traffic hours. Uh, understanding that there is continuing new technology and we certainly want to overcome resistance to using new technology where it does actually improve um, weather forecasting, uh, will the reduction by 60 percent of the people uh, the, the forecasters um, not have some significant effect on uh, the quality of the forecasting. Um, it, will this 
the skies really be a safe if um, there are eight forecasters on duty as opposed to 20? Um, Dr. Dr. Hayes. Well, um, I would say that uh, our, uh, any, on any given day, um, we don't have uh, significant weather affecting aviation uh, covering the entire United States. And so in our existing structure, uh, we have people who are monitoring areas where there is no significant weather. And our consolidation plan uh, uh, is really to reduce the number of employees involved in this from 84 to 50. We will have uh, eight people, and our plan here is actually to put more eyes on where weather has an impact on aviation in, in our proposal. So uh, um, it's our view that we will actually increase the attention that we're playing on weather that has an impact on uh, aviation safety. Okay. And I suppose it's also true that on most days, firefighters have the easiest job in America. Um, Mr. Mr. Pounder, do you have a comment on that? Well, uh, clearly, I, these are all very fair questions, Mr. Chairman. I think the rubber's going to meet the road on the demonstration project. I mean, the key here is to demonstrate no degradation of service. And, you know, and not having that face-to-face on-demand consultation is a concern. We heard that during the course of our work also. And we really won't know that until we have that uh, demonstration in place. And again, I'd like to reiterate, that demonstration is going to be very difficult because as we heard here, we still have performance measures to agree to in terms of what we're measuring. And then once we get those in place, then we have to baseline those so that we have baseline performance to measure against. It's tough to demonstrate no degradation of service if you do not have baseline performance metrics. Okay. My time has expired. Dr. Brown for five minutes. Uh, the ranking, ranking member and in in licensed pilot, Dr. Brown. Mr. Day, are you a pilot? Dr. Hayes, are you a pilot? No, sir, I'm not. Mr. Day, I use Atlanta Center. I fl flew out of Athens, Georgia for a long period of time, and then I flew out of South Georgia a long period of time and worked out of Jack Center, flying into Atlanta Center a lot, and I appreciate your center's good service that I've gotten. <clears throat> but I want to make a statement. Uh, as a pilot, instrument-rated pilot, frequently I would be talking to a controller at a center and would talk to the controller about what weather I was facing. And this is, uh, I would fly at night as well as in the daytime. And just to make a statement to begin with, I don't like this change as a pilot that you're proposing. And I think it's going to not be a good change for pilots. I think it's, uh, and the reason I say that is because frequently I've talked to the center controllers and asked about weather and have talked to a Nash, uh, National Weather Service specialist in the center about what I was dealing with. Trying to consolidate that and working with the controller that was handle, <clears throat> handling my aircraft at the time, being pilot in command, talking to a controller, talking to a weather service specialist, trying to figure out the safest way for me and my aircraft and frequently passengers to traverse through a weather system, I think is absolutely critical for pilots to have that ability. So my change that I would suggest as a pilot to the FAA is to let's go to 24-7, 52 weeks out of the year service with somebody in each control center and not trying to consolidate these things. I think it's absolutely critical. Now, Mr. Day, have y'all at FAA consulted AOPA about their opinion about this, about this change that y'all are proposing? Uh, we have had conversations with AOP, uh, AOPA, just like we had with the flight service consolidation and um, the many pilots like yourself. Oftentimes, they, they do want that uh, <clears throat> comfort of having face-to-face uh, -face briefings or um, assets available. And, and what I would say, because uh, I used to work down in that area and I've been to all those facilities, including Athens Airport, um, the CWSU forecasting is not the only products. You know, as a controller, they have the corridor information or cord corridor information weather service <coughs> services, uh, as well as the 
uh, integrated terminal uh, weather services. Stay, let me interrupt you because my time is very limited. I understand all that, and I understand that we're still going to have towers uh, as well as, as uh, approach and departure control help on that. But there is a lot of territory in Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Texas, Louisiana that I've been flying in that's not covered by a tower. It's not covered by a, a uh, terminal radar. It's covered by the center. And I've talked to those weather specialists, and I've, it's not about having the comfort, it's about having safety. And I think it's absolutely critical to have those specialists in the centers to be able to talk to those folks and talk to a controller with the weather specialist looking over the shoulder so I can talk to both of them at the same time. And I think y'all are, just as the chairman said in his opening statement, and I really appreciated his opening statement, I think y'all are looking for a solution for a problem that's not broken. I'd like to see you guys go to 24-7 personally. I think that's going to be the safest way. You know, since you worked in the Atlanta control, uh, Atlanta center, that we have a lot of thunderstorms, daytime, nighttime. I need, as a pilot, to know where those are and how to circumnavigate them. And talking to somebody in Silver Springs, Maryland, with a controller being in Hampton, is not going to get it, as far as I'm concerned. I like technology. I want, I want to stay on the cutting edge of technology. But I think y'all are a little, you have no metrics to measure what's going on today. You have no possibility of Determining with what's going on from, from the National Weather Service is absolutely providing the services that the pilots desperately need in, in operating a safe aircraft in the air traffic control system. And, and I think until we have the metrics in place, until we have all the things that are absolutely necessary to make sure that we continue in a, in a safe manner to operate in the air traffic control system, I think you're premature and just jumping out and trying to do what you're doing. Now, my time's just about expired, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you've been very gracious in allowing some uh, variance on time. Dr. Hayes, I've got a question for you very quickly because my time is up and the Chairman's been very gracious to offer me some extra time. Can NOAA provide weather specialists in the centers to give that use all the technology uh, that's available to help us as pilots to provide safe travel within the center structure. Can you all do that a and do it in a cost-effective manner and utilize all the technology? Uh, Mr. Brown, are you referring to centers as currently configured today or in the proposed? Uh... No, I'm talking about in centers as they're currently configured today. Uh, and the answer is unqualified, yes. I okay. think uh, uh, our view is that the system works well today, but it needs to work better. Um, there are challenges we face, and as you look to the future of aviation in the United States, the uh, demands for uh, air traffic management are only going to grow, and weather, as you noted, being a significant impact on, on uh, traffic is going to grow in its importance. Um, we need to bring to bear new science and technology. We need to improve the consistency of our forecasts. These are part of what causes some of the delays you experience. I want to assure you uh, I am committed to enhancing the services that we provide to the FAA. Uh, I'm, and I'm, I'm also committed to doing it in a way that ensures safety. So I have responded to their requirement because I believe that what they're asking is viable, and I have a responsibility since I'm a service provider to test what I consider to be scientifically viable solutions, have an objective, independent, third party evaluate, and if there is any concern about degradation, then there is no commitment on our part to move forward. Thank you. Well, I appreciate the great services that you all provide. My time's up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Ms. Dalkemper. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess I want to piggyback on uh, what we were just talking about, but as you're talking about the conclusions regarding the CWSU baseline performance, are they going to be evaluated, evaluated by the National Academies? Uh, Dr. Hayes, uh, Mr. Day, one of you. Um, our plan with the involvement of the National Academies is that they will bring together the expertise and that will be in, involved in looking at the plan, looking at the metrics we have, 
uh, overseeing the execution of the DEMVAL, evaluating the results. And again, part of their evaluation, uh, if there's any concern with the baseline metrics that we have, whether they're strong enough, whether the execution um, uh, is strong enough to indicate that there's no degradation, uh, we expect them to tell us that. In addition, uh, internally, uh, I have a responsibility to the American people that every step of the way, I evaluate our internal processes, and if I see something that they don't see, I have a responsibility to say, hold everything. And so I think there's a dual uh, aspect to this evaluation, both external and, and internal. Will all the metrics that are proposed by the recent GAO strictly be um, adopted in that? Um, I, I think we've, we've got four of them in work in, in implementation today. We're looking at forecast accuracy. We're working with the FAA, and we hope to have that soon. Um, and I would say that uh, if there are additional metrics, again, our, our intent here is not to uh, cut any corners with regard to safety of, uh, of flight in our services. Thank you. Mr. Pounder, when FAA rejected the second NWS proposal for consolidation, they stated that they believe the technology has moved to a point where face-to-face -face communication between forecasters and air controllers is, is not needed. Given your experience looking at the technology acquisitions and use in federal agencies, are there risks in this approach that relies on technology to fill in for direct human contact? Well, clearly the uh, on-demand consultation, you can put in, there are technologies to put in place, you know, with various uh, communication mechanisms we could have that. I will tell you, though, during the course of our review, we actually visited four centers, and three of the four preferred to move forward with a face-to-face on-demand consultation. So I still think that's the mode that most folks are comfortable with. I think the technology, when you want to continue to pursue that, I think that what we're talking about here is consistent with where FAA is going with their longer-term next-gen initiatives where you do more remotely, not just weather but other things associated with air traffic control. So you want to continue to push that, but again, you want to make sure you need to listen to the users and you want to make sure there's no degradation of service. And I guess I just want to go back to uh, Dr. Hayes and Mr. Day and uh, again kind of uh, piggybacking on what's already been asked. I guess. What is it that we are trying to fix through this consolidation? Exactly what is it we're trying to fix? Because um, it seems to be unanimity among meteorologists that this, they're a necessary part of this safety team. So what is it that we're trying to fix? Uh, thank you. So first of all, uh, through evaluations uh, by both the GAO as well as our site visits and from customer feedback, uh, we lack the consistency and accuracy of our forecast. And as uh, what we've seen is many times our very competent and, and committed um, uh, meteorologists uh, provide a regional view. Uh, however, that becomes murky as you look at a national airspace system and a common operational picture by which to make mission-driven decisions and ensure safety and, and a successful mission. Uh, so we believe that by moving to uh, this new model, uh, we can uh, resolve some of those inconsistencies and, and accuracy, like we realized with the CCFP product for convective um, uh, weather. It, Dr. Hayes, did you want to comment on that? I, I would say that I, I've seen evidence in the past 18 months since I've been in the job where we have some challenges with consistency. Um, uh, uh, FAA identified uh, an impact three weeks ago uh, in the New York City area where uh, our weather forecast office terminal aerodrome forecast was inconsistent with the CCFP product and so we're taking action now uh, to to address that uh, and that will be part and that is part of our response it's to focus on a consistent mes mes um, message to uh, air traffic controllers. I mentioned in my opening. And that can't be done in the current system that we have right now? The consistency issue can't be fixed? N no, it can. It can be with the existing system. It can be or it cannot? It, it, it is. There are challenges there that uh, uh, we would have that we wouldn't have with fewer locations. Obviously, the more people in the uh, message generation loop, the more difficult it is to ensure consistency. Okay, my time's expired. I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Dow Kemper. Uh, my current plan is to uh, represent Mr. Lipinski for five minutes of questions, and at that point, we probably need to go to votes, and we'll be gone for votes for a sufficiently long time that does not make sense to come back. So, uh, Mr. Lipinski for five Mr. minutes. Mr. Chairman, could I ask for unanimous consent uh, 
to enter into the record a statement from the air traffic controllers, from the weather union uh, folks, as well as AOPA? Uh, that would be fine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, it, it is so ordered. Uh, Mr. Lipinski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank Chairman Miller and Ranking Member Brown for both of you for, for holding this uh, important hearing and for allowing you to join uh, in on the uh, subcommittee here this morning. As some of you may know, Midway Airport is in my district and uh, O'Hare is close and air traffic safety is, is very important to me. Uh, I've been following this proposed consolidation with uh, increasing concern. A little over a month ago, we had Administrator Babbitt in before the uh, Transportation Infrastructure Committee's Aviation Subcommittee. And I was asking him questions that uh, we have been focusing on here this morning. Unfortunately, he had uh, just gotten into that position, and at that time, he really didn't have uh, much to tell me. He said he hadn't had a chance to review the latest version of the uh, NWS proposal. So I'm hoping that today, with this very helpful GAO report, we can get a, a clearer picture. I have a lo lot of questions here. Let me uh, try to focus in, uh, and I'll have some questions uh, for the record, but uh, focus in on uh, uh, two if we have time. Uh, Dr. Hayes, the meteorologists who currently work the 21 uh, CWSUs have developed very precise knowledge of how weather patterns tend to emerge in, in each area. During the test phase of the consolidated program, how do you intend to staff this new consolidated center? If, for instance, you are taking some of the most senior people out of the existing 21 centers, how can you fairly and accurately evaluate the current system versus a new proposal? And what will become the meteorologists at the existing CWSUs if consolidation occurs? Uh, for staffing the DEMVAL, Mr. Lipinski, uh, our plan is to not take the people out of the existing CWSUs. Our, our plan is to take uh, aviation weather expertise uh, out of uh, our science and operations office, uh, officers at our weather forecast offices. Some of our meteorologists in charge uh, will staff the, uh, DEM, uh, the DEMVAL sites so that we do have, an, um, I think, a fair and objective uh, comparison of as is versus to be. Do you see any problem with the uh, difference in experience that uh, you'll have at the, um, you know, comparing two different, uh, the two different systems? Uh, actually, I think if it biases it at all, it would bias it toward the, the as is today because that's where the aviation experience is today. Um, uh, and so, um, no, I, I, I don't think that it's an unfair comparison. So then what, what happens uh, with the meteorologists at the existing um, CWSUs? Well, we would offer them a job uh, elsewhere if, they were, if we were to reduce or to eliminate that CWSU and offer them a job ideally at one of the two uh, that, we are gonna, that we have proposed. And if uh, we also have vacancies at nearby forecast offices and we would attempt to uh, offer them opportunities. One other aspect of the proposal uh, that we put forward that we think will enhance its attractiveness to um, members of our CWC staff is to raise the uh, GS grade of uh, aviation weather forecasters. And I think what this will, in a long term, do create a, a, an aviation career opportunity that they don't have today. Okay, I just want to, don't have much time here. I'll quickly move on to second question or Dr. Hayes. On, on May 9, 2008, uh, when the uh, uh, National Weather Service sent the FAA's latest consolidation proposal. You accompanied the proposal with a transmittal letter, letter that included some language which concerned me. Uh, you wrote that, quote, the non-remote option expands and improves CWSU's services at the 21 current locations. This option sustains the capability to provide face-to-face -face decision support, which reduces risk when rapidly changing weather has the potential for first-order impact on aviation. I think we can all agree that if the proposal increases the risk relative to the current system, that it's not going to be acceptable. There are two things I want to understand. First, what did you mean by first order impact in aviation? And second, how can a new system with less local weather knowledge possibly reduce risk? Now, haven't the air traffic controllers spoken out in favor of keeping the forecasters co-located? 
Well, I, I think, Mr. Lipinski, um, uh, when you're trying to communicate, one has to say that face-to-face -face does lessen risk. Uh, whether it's a significant reduction in risk, uh, I don't think I can uh, categorically say one way or the other. There's, there's, it, it just depends on the situation. Um, I, I, I guess my position is and has been that um, I think that what the FAA has asked me to do is viable and I'm willing to test it and, and then uh, see what the results show with an independent evaluation. How much of an increase in risk are we uh, going to allow? Well, again, the risk is to communicating what we intend, whether that risk translates into an impact on safety or not. I don't, again, I don't think I can say. Okay, I think uh, I have some more questions for uh, for the record, but I know that we don't have much much time here, and uh, so I'll yield back. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lipinski. And, and the record will remain open for three days, three legislative days for uh, records. Uh, we have share uh, we have provided to the minority a list of documents, um, and I now move or ask unanimous consent that they be entered in the record without objection to so ordered. Um, under the rules of the committee, the record will remain open for two weeks, excuse me, for additional statements from the members and for questions for follow-up uh, and for answers to any follow-up questions that the uh, committee may submit. Um, and uh, it, it certainly appears based on today's testimony that uh, by the time we've developed uh, reasonable, uh, careful criteria for the DIMVAL for determining whether the new, uh, the new uh, procedure is uh, the equal of the old, um, next gen will be here, and playing out the clock may not be such a bad thing. Uh, and with that, uh, the hearing is adjourned. The witnesses are excused. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you.